Hope you've had a wonderful week wherever you're listening around Australia and around the world. And the gentlemen in this room are going to hopefully make it even better for you as we lead up to Friday night football. An enormous show coming your way. Cult hero Barry Round. Mythbuster segment with former umpire Scott McLaren. All the news. Some big stories developing. And as always, we had a change of the captain of the country this week. But the captain of the Friday huddle is back as always, Luke Darcy. Hello to you, Darcy. Hello, Howard. Uh, feeling particularly good tonight, uh, Damo, to be here. Just came... Uh, from a, uh, a brilliant uh, catch-up, a uh, beautiful young girl called Nicole Gibson, starting a community called Love Out Loud. I, I'm feeling a lot of love at the moment. Love, uh, what's Love Out Loud? Love Out Loud is a, uh, a community. She's an extraordinary. She was a uh, finalist in the Australian of the Year. You can catch her on the Empowering Leaders podcast, uh, Howie, in a few weeks' oh, time. But an extraordinary young entrepreneur who has an amazing story to tell. So full of, I'm feeling a lot of love in this room already tonight. Now. When I think love out loud, I think of only one man, and that's Jason Dunstall. Hello to you, Chief. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. I love the fact that Duke's in that sort of mood because he doesn't spread a lot of love around here, to be no. brutally honest. No, he doesn't. In, in, really? in my time back on Friday nights, Duke, you're a, you're a touch standoffish. Really? A little surly at times. Dude, that's uh... A hint of arrogance. <laughs> uh, always talking to... down to people. Always. Really? Always. So I'm glad you've seen the light, mate. This... This could be a new leaf. For you. Feedback's a gift, Chief. I'm going to take that on board. <laughs> Our flashy forward is here as always, looking uh, beautiful and... One of my Wonderful. favourite nights of the week is Friday mm. night when I come in to see you guys. And, and Duke's been one of my captains and my leaders for a long, long time at the footy club. And then in life, after footy, a lot of advice. And the word leader is very, very interesting tonight, Howard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we might explore that in a moment. Wow. Damien Barrett's here as always. He's been breaking big stories all during the week. And he's here again, Damo. Nice to see you on a Friday night. Hello, Howie. And I'm actually aware of some of Nathan's work in the lead up to tonight, too. So it, uh, I'm not. It, it sounds will like be an, or- an orchestrated campaign, uh, Chief, this one. A few minutes coming up for. For one of us, I think. Well, I smell I an ambush we, we and get it better you. not be Just me. Just before we get into it, Chief, <laughs> I was watching you on Fox last night. Just warm, engaging yeah. and entertaining. The Thursday night edition of 360, you are a bubbly. Mm. You are a bubbly character on I, there. I don't, I don't understand why You've that surprises you. Well, it'd be nice to see it on a Friday. You've got a spritz <laughs> about you. I'm always happy. You. you guys try to make me into this angry, crabby sort of person. It doesn't but take I'm just, much work. I'm just a happy person. Is it the purple jacket you well, think? Yeah, the yeah. He comes yeah. in, in the mauve jacket yeah. and he bounces in. It's like, it's like watching well, it's sort of a great jacket, isn't it? You're a great role player. So you, you, you're like a chameleon. So you just adapt to the surroundings. And I feel like you need to play that role on there because it's a bit more of an up program and you it's very spritzy. You're a, you're a spritzy is. sort it of is. character no, on there. And, and I think it's good. And I, I agree with Howie. You should bring a little bit more of that to here yeah, well, because sometimes well, you can be a bit negative. We're all getting feedback, Jim. Well, I think the <laughs> Although it's only directed at you and I thus far. So far. So far. I, I, I think Kath Lufferman brings out the best yeah, in Yeah, no, Kath, in Kath's chief. a star. I think he but raises he's, his he's got that real sort of play school feel about him where he's just smiley and giggly. Mm. And I just want to walk into the television and hear what he's got to say. I love it, Chief. Can I ask uh, the Duke... It doesn't a... cost to be happy. No, 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 no. it's free. Smiles are free, Chief. Can I ask the Duke a question? How did you feel like the um, the election went, Duke? They're like <laughs> Last week, it was a big oh, weekend. Wow. How did you feel oh, it panned out? Well, I'm fairly apolitical as a rule, uh, mm. Nate. So in terms of uh, you know my interest, it's probably been heightened in recent times. I think mm. given um, mm. what we've all been mm. through as a community here, I think we've probably taken more of an interest in than it before, but change is good. Change is a good thing, I think. What do you uh, think, Damo? I think it's a bit more than a heightened interest. Oh, uh, Brandon, I think so as well. We, we do both have our uh, individual connections inside the, the rooms of one of the political parties at play here. And, and while there's some really? organisations, how we mm. in Your real brother. disarray. Your yes. brother himself used to work for Tony Abbott. He did. Mm. I don't speak to him about politics, but yes, he did. So mm. there are connections there. Who's in disarray? I've spoken well, to there, your brother There's about a lot of organisations in disarray. The, the West Coast Eagles, the Essendon mm. Footy Club, the, the North Melbourne Footy Club. But the, the one in most disarray mm. of, a, of a high-end organisational nature is the Liberal Party mm. of Australia. And, Brownie, we've established for a long time now there are connections with our man, Luke Darcy. In that and they space. run deep. They, they run, run deep. deep. And he's been orchestrating, I think, for the best part of six to eight years. That I far back. That that far back. What really? have I been orchestrating, can I ask? Well, I think Damo wants to, and myself want to put <laughs> to you there. They're, they're backing away. <laughs> Here we go. Can, can I just Here say something goes. before you go on? My happiness levels just rose another couple of inches because I think I'm off the hook. I think it's you, Chief. I think it's you. Jeez, yeah, it's not about you, Chief. <laughs> Look at the joy that he's got knowing that it's coming my way. We feel well, that, Jeff, you, feel, you are starting to arm yourself in a career in politics. Really? Oh. Yeah, a little tilted. I know uh, we've spoken about the Chief before. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but uh, Damo, we feel like that this is where 
the Darcy family has yeah. been pushing the, family. The, the the Luke part of that family yes. into the politics yeah. and, area. And Hutchie, I spoke to Brownie during the week on a, on another podcast I do. Who the, knows the a lot? Um, actually, blindsided me with what he had to say about uh, Darcy's involvement in this space. Mm. Isn't Luke buying the seat? That's how close they are. <laughs> Isn't Luke's positioning himself for a run, isn't he, at some stage? Is that what that's about? Yeah. I hadn't even thought of that. Have you... I'm How many times do you think Luke's been approached for pre-selection over the years and said, no, I'll just wait? And he's very good with his timing. I would be putting it out there back to you that he's <laughs> one of the future Liberals that might bob his head up at some stage. Are you saying that Luke Darcy could actually become a politician? Well, he's been a, an outspoken social voice. I'm sure he's been approached along the way and said no. Mm. So, now Hutchie he knows equally, a lot of people. H- Hutchie, Hutchie knows Josh Frydenberg, is, I think, better than... Luke Darcy. So that mail will be good. We go back to 2020, how we when COVID yes. hit. And, oh, yes, right. and obviously, Darcy changed the narrative on the whole lockdown debate. Well, I think and, it's where the run that, started. That's a big call. I no, think no, it's that, where that, the run that's, started. I mean that complementarily. And what we're learning, though, is he did it through the lens of a, a Liberal Party person as yeah, much as it was a person no, who no, had nothing lockdown. Yeah. I don't think there's so anything to be careful. careful. I think we're okay. And, and for those who no allegiance. forget Darcy's role in how this state changed this behaviour in this space, this mm-hmm. was the uh, the turn of events. Darcy, the notion of me saying, well, I'm not going to follow the advice of people who've spent a lifetime dealing with infectious diseases... That is not something I'm prepared no, of to course, do. Of course you wouldn't do that, Premier, but what we would hope is that you would then, when you've got really, really preeminent people saying to you, Premier, you have to listen at a deeper level, who are signing up, putting their necks on the line. They're getting enormous blowback, these people, because when you do put yourself up as a professional in this environment, Premier, people come at you in a big way to actually, why not form that independent I'm, I'm, panel? And people I'm, still I'm, can't I'm, understand I'm, why I'm, Melbourne I'm has got much, the most extreme in. lockdown in the world. People can't get I'm, their head around I'm, why this I'm is the, the outcome for us. I'm very much aware that um, there's there's a lot of criticism around the place, and that's a perfectly healthy thing. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think the that's actually just, opportunity, Premier, to actually take yeah. on more opinion. Not I'm not, well, not being critical. Think, Form that panel. Get those people in. Well, I think, get them to sit down with Brett Sutton. No one can get Brett Sutton to sit down for an interview and find out about your supercomputer and about the model that we keep hearing about. I feel like if it was wow. a tennis score, it's 5 2 40 15. Oh, and the Duke. Absolutely dominated. Uh, it's bagel. It's dominated. It's it's one, bagel and this is where premier. it started to really yeah. boil over for him. And then we've seen the photo shoots and the, the kissing babies and trotting out Sam and the photos, obviously. So <laughs> <laughs> he's done the whole politician <laughs> thing. But then it just yeah. ramped up yeah. as the election got closer. Yeah. And one of our very good mates alerted us to something about the Duke. But if there's one thing worse than a politician, it's a sycophant. To a politician, Howard, and right. it's come across my desk yep. that one of our very own, yep. Ooh. the Ooh. Duke, Ooh. has a board up in his front garden oh. like one of those political oh. nuffies. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like no. one of those nuffies. Oh. Oh. I'd like some evidence to be produced of that. Uh, <laughs> is this or is this not true, Duke? <laughs> very close to the truth. <laughs> oh, Who are you pushing um, for, Duke? What are you telling Spit other people what to think, Duke? I, no, they not, can think for themselves. I'm, I'm just declaring my hand. Judge, who's uh, on the board? Well, Josh Friedman. So Josh Frydenberg's on the board. Now, Josh Frydenberg lost his seat. So, yes. so Darcy has also got his connections, though, Howie, with the person who's going to be the leader of the Liberal Party, Peter Dutton. Right. Not only Josh Frydenberg, but Peter Dutton in his back pocket. In his back pocket. Well, what's and the connection there? Oh, the connection let's, there, let's listen. The oh, connection God, there is <laughs> one of our connections sent us an article linked, to, written by Samantha Maiden, then working at the New Daily Operation. In an exclusive, wrote the uh, the fact that Peter Dutton, the man Paul Keating recently described as the meanest man in politics, is studying meditation. There is a quote here from Mr. Dutton. I became interested in meditation through some mates, including AFL great Luke Darcy, <laughs> Mr. Dutton said. And it went into an amazing spiel about Luke what? Darcy's mates and Luke Darcy himself introducing just... him to meditation. So, Brownie. Is that real? That, that's, that, that that's, is online. As I said, I'm feeling a lot of love in the room uh, tonight, Howie. And so that, you've got uh, fingers is, through the you know, entire well, party. That's Frydenberg that's in your front to, yard and, and Dutton to, in your to, contact to, book. To bring uh, meditation into the highest uh, offices seems like a, a, a good... Now, there's a couple of real issues with all of this. One is that... Uh, uh, do we need to speak yet or do we need to push speak on? Or not? Um, what do you think, Brownie? Do we... Do we I'd like the, the, we'll chief, the chief, right reply. I'd like the Chief and, and Howard to speak well, first I, I, before Duke I, I, gets I, I, his I, I, Sorry, Howie's got some... I was, uh, alerted, I was alerted to this, that there was a bit going on 
Um, and there's been a discussion at high levels as to what Das is, slogan, <laughs> what his campaign slogan. Oh, yeah. slogan. You can you teach me about slogans. We'll we'll go there now. We know so, you and Erica wrote a slogan so, uh, for your well, new this, TV show. This is show. about you at the moment. So th- this is the slogan that Das is going to run his uh, his very, very fancy seat on. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. That's a cheap guess. Say that again. That's a good guess. So what, 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 cheap, what do you think? Are you voting for him? Because he's obviously well, been I'm, positioning I'm himself. I'm a bit confused because he just told us he was apolitical. So would he run as an independent? Uh, no, 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 saying no, no, this he party would affiliate a, with the no, party. This party no, has a project. But, but, but you can't well, do that. Our if information you're, if you're, is he's considering it. If you're portraying <laughs> yourself it. as apolitical, that then is a sizable shift. Having said that, yes, he is the type of person I could see would fit comfortably into that smarmy, slimy <laughs> sort of political environment where they just, you know, lots of lots of talking, yabbering, promising and delivering very little. Chief, Chief. I put to you, Das, that there's been high-level discussions about new and upcoming Liberal candidates and you are going to be one of them because the Liberal Party see you as a strong, you, smart, yeah. educated person who can influence people. Yep. Mm. And as serious as we get here, I think that is a good thing. And I think you're a tool, <laughs> no, is what I think. And there's a couple of one, – one, first and foremost, that is ridiculous uh, – Assumption and second is that I have far too many skeletons anywhere. <laughs> if I decided that that was going to be public life, I would be in all yeah. sorts. Have too many footy trips. Have you been approached at all? Let's be honest about this. Have you been approached? No. Have you been approached? No. Our mail is you have. Do I have it? Well, yeah. Can, yeah. I, can I only say no and then <laughs> you you ask me again? Our mail's good. Say, <laughs> sorry, my, your mail's better we than mine. We are led to believe you've been approached on numerous so occasions. The fact that it hasn't happened doesn't matter. Let's take it at face value that he hasn't. If you were, would you have the conversation? No. No, it would be a very one-word answer, want you to Chief. They, really? they, they want you. Yeah, I'm sure they, they uh, feel very capable without well, uh, my hand. And I don't feel aligned. To, I, I, honestly, I feel aligned to good leadership. And you, I think uh, You built organisations. You built the Western Bulldogs. So they were in the Liberal Party getting... in 2014 when you went and got Luke Beveridge's coach. Mm-hmm. And, and now, that's the type of leadership. Foolish. You be but the I, best you, Duke. I, I'm massive on uh, the fact that we need good leadership at a national level and a state level, and we should ask good questions. And you're a good I've been fortunate enough to be in the chair to ask some questions. And, and you're, you're not a political, Darcy. You had Josh Frydenberg's <laughs> poster in your front yard. That, that's not a yes, political. That's, 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 that's one sided. That, well, that's supporting an individual and, who I know well who lives, Dutton, lives around the street from me. Well, that's, well, that's, that's with you. I can see a stumbling block, Brownie. <laughs> what is it? I'm not convinced that there's enough money in politics for the Duke to involve himself. <laughs> Although he could get on the rorting scheme, couldn't he? And sort of fill his pockets that way. Richmond versus Sydney is the game. Now, I've got something to read to you that I read in the paper this week. Which ego will win, Chief? I need full input. That's the question being asked to Channel 9 Docklands Studio as the jockeying for the coveted Sunday football show host chair heats up. With Tony TJ... Jones going to Wimbledon next month, uh-huh. a replacement in the main chair is being sought, and we hear there is plenty of chomping <laughs> getting involved. Former Western Bulldogs and Richmond star Nathan Brown has never lacked lack confidence and has been approached and seen as the most likely. I have a list of, I spoke to Channel 9 today, and I said, right, I want to know who's in the race. <laughs> did you really? No, you worked for the network. Yeah. No, who, did you ring, who did you ring at Channel 9? Um, <laughs> Brent Williams? Brent, Brent Williams, yeah. right. head of sport. Yeah. I had a chat to Willow today. I, I doubt you did that, but anyway, we'll go with it. And those above Brent. So high, There's high no level. Above Brent. And I, I've been given a list of those that can potentially take over for Tony. So how long has uh, Chompers gone for? Oh, he's going to Wimbledon. He's got a month on here, four weeks. Four mate. weeks, Nate's but that, that's four weeks is long enough to lose your job. We all know that. As they say in our industry, always be careful taking a holiday, uh, Chief. Yes. Now, now, from all reports, Tony is pushing Nathan because you never want to give someone the job that's a true threat to you. <laughs> so that's the first thing I've understood, Chief. So these are the names that have been thrown my way. Peter Hitchener. Hitch? Hitch. Well, if Hitch wants it, I'd say it's Hitch's. What do you think, Chief? How would Hitch go? I don't think he would mix with that lot, would he? So you think he's a bit high? I think he's above it. I think he's above it. <laughs> yeah, Damo, you're you're involved in this. I, I just can't see Peter wanting to do that right. on a Sunday Probably morning. Probably got too much yeah. integrity. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's well, a fair point. We'll put a line through uh, Peter Hitchin. Yeah. Andy Lee is high up because he loves his football, big Carlton man, and a fair bit more entertaining than the current panelists. <laughs> is the word out of Channel Nine, and has got nine connections already. He, he would has. be great. He would be great. I don't think. Uh, they could afford him. I don't think the budget for the show would in. Has he been doing the front him. bar as well? 
Yes, but he's got one of those Eddie Maguire style deals where he'll work for anybody. Right. So you think it's a financial yep. no for Andy? Yep. He does what he likes, Andy. If he wants it, he can do anything. What do you reckon you get paid as a fill-in host if you just came in to host the Sunday Well, show? Nate's the numbers man, and given that he's eyeing this off, <laughs> we need to ask you, what are you going to get paid, Nate, if what, you get What the... would TJ generally get to host <laughs> the footage? <laughs> <He's laughs> first time I've seen his forehead move in foot. nine weeks. <laughs> would you, it hasn't moved. Would you get more to host it, Brownie? Uh, I don't been... think I would get more to host it, but I'd, I'd imagine that TJ gets more than me to host the if, show. If you took it out of his package, him. what's he getting paid to host it? Like four, grand a, four grand a Sunday? Yeah, outside the news, probably about that, yeah. Okay, right. So that Andy Lee's not getting out of bed on the news in that. Andy's not getting out of bed on the Sunday for four grams. Okay, so we'll TJ put, probably tells we'll put, uh, Annette that he only gets three for three, three a week. Though. A little slush fund we'll on the side. For three Andy Lee. A little one. Old, That's a big one. The old chicken dance special. Uh, <laughs> the... Alicia Loxley now, does there's a, a fine uh, job yep, at yeah. Channel Nine. This is uh, I can't choose between Alicia Loxley, the uh, yeah. election coverage, hosted the election coverage, and well, Alicia Muling as well. well she she both the Alicia. Alicia Loxley picked TJ for. The, the number two gig behind when when Hitch goes. So, right, well, she's no, got TJ no chance of getting yeah, the job. TJ then, then didn't, didn't want it. it. After he was told he wasn't going to get it, then he didn't want it. <laughs> so Alicia Muling is heavily under consideration. Fine, fine sports journal. Two of the best. This this is one that concerns me for our man Nath, Sam McClure. Ooh. Mm. Now that would uh, Sam, a very capable host, and yes. does, does and like fill in that, on Footy Classified yep. beautifully. And like yep. Nate has enormous self confidence. <laughs> In fact, he might have more than Nate, I reckon. Possibly. So I think that's the name that really is unsettling. Right. Uh, Nate. Yeah. Looks I'm generally... pretty settled, Duke. Oh, you, you think you've got Sam covered? What? Do you think you've got Sam covered? It's a yes or a no. Why, why'd you nod then? Well, I didn't nod, Damo. I'm just being respectful. The camera's in this studio now, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Can we actually get that on? Oh, I've got a couple more. I've got a couple more. Captured. This is left field, but I like this, and this will cause real concerns. Does a fine job on postcards. Long-term being connected with nine through the weather. Rebecca Judd. Oh, that would be that would be, oh, that would uh, be good. Especially yeah. to replace Tony Jones. <laughs> 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 we know that. I think she'd have a clause that as soon as Tony comes back, she's not anywhere near the uh, Channel 9 studio chief. And There's unlike the other Judd, uh, don't get on? No, don't get on. Unlike the other Judd, she, she can, <laughs> she can talk on TV. <laughs> TV. <laughs> on TV, which doesn't run in the family. And the, yeah. the other one, before we get to Nathan Mount, his defence, the one that really concerns me, and Nine did not want me to bring this name up because this person has made an approach to Tony without telling Nathan. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Damo has oh, put his oh. hand up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he and, does and host Access All Areas on the uh, AFL website. And, uh, is, there, is, there is concerns at Nine because he's heavily associated with taking down the footy show after 28 years. <laughs> so that, that is working against him. But this is what, where what about the volcano, Kane Corns? He, uh, he no, hosts... no, it hasn't been considered. <laughs> hasn't, hasn't been considered at this particular a juncture. A radio show. Does a fine no. job. This is Nine making these decisions. No, oh, nothing right. to do with the list I'm putting together. So, um, Lordo. Uh, no, not, no, he, not he's, a, he, he's a panelist. So uh, are you voting? If it comes down to our two boys, uh, I want to know from you two, are you voting team Nate or are you voting team Damo? N- Nate will get his chance to put his case forward as he did to th- today's show. But unfortunately, who, who got your job? Was it <laughs> Timmy Gilbert? <laughs> Timmy <laughs> Gilbert after, after, after Carl he's promised been you the gig. After mm. you put a deposit down on a yep. rental property. Yeah, after you yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. moving to when Sydney. Carl, Carl, told you Carl you had thought it. I had it. Yeah, yeah. we tried <laughs> to get hold of Carl, but apparently he loosens up a bit on Friday night, so couldn't appear on the, <laughs> or on the wires. Who are you going for, Damo or Nathan, if it comes down to the two? Uh, probably. <laughs> Let me have a think about it. <laughs> No, nah, look, I wouldn't recommend either of those two. I think I'd probably <laughs> go back to Beck Judd. I think. Beck Judd, yeah. I, <laughs> I think, you, so. Chief, you, you, you I think, I think they could do a lot worse than having Nate or Damo there. It would depend on what the brief for the show is. I mean, if you want it to be efficient, smooth, um, well-spoken, well-managed, well, that's Damo's wheelhouse. That is, yep. If you want it to be loose and unpredictable, <laughs> which is with the potential is... to be taken off air, <laughs> that's Nate's wheelhouse. So you've got to work out On what edge, sort of Chief. show you want. Correct. Sizzle or no sizzle, yeah. the yeah. way I describe yeah. it. It's about getting the best out of the people around you, and I think I can do that, and uh, I'll just leave it in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, no, you, got, you, got, you might need more than the Lord to get this job from what I've been told, but you've got 30 seconds. Why are you the man to host in, in Tony's spot? Uh I think Howard, and uh, yeah. I, this is a ridiculous thing to even contemplate, but 
We're a, we're a team. Yep. So you don't want to bring outsiders in. No. So we've got a nice team, and I just Would don't think we need anybody else. Would it be great to get a little bit diversity else. on that panel? I mean, it, it's a very um, sort of Anglo, um, very male dominated. Absolutely, yes. very right. male If that is Doesn't... the way that it, that, it, that it falls, you, we're more than happy to be diverse. So you're, you're the man for the job, you feel? Uh, if they give me the job, Howard, I'll gratefully do Would it. Would you be more equipped than the others that I just read out? Um, yeah. <laughs> you seem pretty comfortable in your in your demeanour right he now. Does, I, I he? think you've it's had like a conversation, and I'll work on a sign off, just like you've been working <laughs> on. Yeah, yours. what are you going to yeah. go with? Hey? <laughs> Not that sun one. <laughs> Not that may the sun shine on you. May on the you. sun shine on you. Well, <laughs> as far as sign offs go, you had a crack uh, when I had COVID of hosting this particular <laughs> show. M- maybe go with this sign off, Nath. That's to everybody who helped us out put this to get out to the end of the art. Uh, I'm going to finish off with that. <laughs> Triple M rocks footy. That's the worst. <laughs> uh, good news out of Geelong today, Damo. Via the uh, official re-signing of Chris Scott for a further two years. So 2023 and 24 is the two years in question. He was obviously already and obviously contracted for, for this season. It'll make him Das, uh, Chief and, and Brownie and Howie, the uh, the longest serving Geelong coach. Um, currently on 271 games. <laughs> That contract, that extension, will uh, take him past Reg Hickey, 304. He's the most successful coach in history when it comes to matches one. It's at 69%. He's been coaching since 2011. That was the first year of his career. That was the premiership year. Multiple prelim finals after that. And it was a deal also, Howie, that was basically brokered when... Brian Cook was still at the club as CEO. It, it's taken until the halfway point of this season with the new CEO and other thought processes around it for it to be officially released to the, the public that it's uh, it's done. Speaking about quality leadership, uh, Chris Scott's got every bit of that and you just look at the record and think what he's been able to achieve over a long period of time. And I love it when clubs get ahead of the curve and mm. so we've got an outstanding individual in our midst. Why would we want to try and uh, search elsewhere? So he deserves... Um, Everything he gets, that man. I, I think he's harshly treated. Uh, sorry, Chief, when, when it comes to the, 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 the lack of premiership, which followed yep. 2011. They're, they're hard to win. He constantly gets them into the preliminary finals. Now, and there's an issue there, obviously, and it's part of the conversation. They don't go beyond that point after 2011. But when you throw it all in, uh, he's as good as there's been in that same period without winning the flag. Well, he is. I mean, if, if you were told you're going to be 7-3 and three every year at the halfway mark, you'd be pretty happy, wouldn't you? I mean, winning 70% of games is just a ridiculous percentage. But you get judged on premierships. And what we've got at the moment is a, it, it's a, an era where premierships are coming in bunches for clubs. And he was part of that at Geelong, but he was at the back end. That was the problem. So they'd won 07, 09. He won it in 11. Then you saw Hawthorne win three. You saw uh, Richmond win three. I think Melbourne could win two or three pretty comfortably in the next few years. So they were twenty-two it, points up against Richmond yep. at the Gabba yep. in the twenty twenty Grand Final. Dusty mm. kicked a goal and a point just before half time of that game, and uh, yeah, the rest was history. But that's that's what happens, mate. You, you get judged on premierships, and some clubs and some supporters <clears throat> are less forgiving than others. Mm. But I think he's a quality person. He's done a great job down there, and I, I mean to sit there and say, "Oh, let's get rid of him." Who are you going to get to replace him? You would want to have someone already in the palm of your hand that is going to be a superstar if you're talking about letting Chris Scott go. Chiefy, I live in uh, down past Geelong on yep. the coast. where I'm talking 90, you go to Auskick, 98% of people have Geelong jumpers on it. It's passed on the family all the way where everyone goes for Geelong. And the level of requirement for him to be seen as a successful coach yeah, yeah. amongst the Geelong supporters is mm. extraordinary. Yep. It's like, well, if we didn't win the flag this year, the coach is not up to it. I find it ext- oh, I have oh, these debates weekly. Yeah, I'm with you, Howie. There'll be some Geelong-connected people tonight wondering why this has been ratified, you know, g- given oh, there had gosh. been some clear, clear um, d- dispute, in inverted commas, over it, given it was meant to be signed officially at the end of last year. Uh, Jordan Ruffhead does, someone who would be very dear to your heart, given what he did in the 2016 final season series and that season in totality uh, has today announced his retirement as a Collingwood player spoke to the the club today to uh, to say this coming into this season I knew that it was likely to be my last I've had some ongoing shoulder issues for, for the last few years um, that unfortunately haven't been getting any better um, and s- advice from surgeons and specialists um, and, and our medical team as well their advice has been that I should retire from all levels of football um, to avoid the need for a, 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 an immediate-term shoulder replacement. 
I won't speak for too long because I know that someone will have put together a pretty good highlights package of me. <laughs> Um, and I'm conscious you might want to watch it twice, so we'll make sure there's heaps of time for that. If you have been paying attention to Wadey's medical reports, I'm the first player to actually officially retire from a finger injury. Um, so that's, thanks Wadey. I don't know where you are, but... Quality human Good being. Humor. He's Good just uh, fantastic. It's a, it is a small community, the community we operate in, Howie, and uh, he's, in terms of uh, great people, I say that, I get accused of saying that. There's lots of great people, but it is a, a, a brilliant community. He deserves his premiership success, and he went and played, I thought, really good football at uh, at the Magpies as well. So wish him all the best. Yeah, it's a chronic shoulder. We're seeing some players, that, Kane Lambert's another one that's dealing with a chronic hip that we hope yep. can find uh, some light at the end of the tunnel. But it's a shame when players get, I get uh, drawn to a premature end of their careers. Just a couple of team selection news, news uh, before we get to the North Melbourne issue. How are we, uh, Matt? Kennedy will miss for Carlton in their big game against Collingwood on Sunday with a corked quad. Jack Billings has been dropped for St Kilda in its game against North Melbourne. And we do have a confirmation tonight that Charlie Dixon will play uh, Brownie for Port Adelaide. His first game for the year on Sunday against Essendon. And what that has meant is that uh, Mitch Georgiades will be making way for him. The Saints are going well if they're dropping Jack Billings, who's a, a very talented player as well. Port Adelaide, uh, opportunity coming up in the next couple of weeks for them. They get Charlie Dixon back. Marshall's been really good, so does he continue the role he's playing? Um, and Georgiades obviously goes out of that side. But uh, And they've got Finn Lason. So it's a three-pronged attack at the moment. And if they can get the job done, um, they're, they're well on their way to playing finals if they can continue the form they've got at the moment. I thought they were pretty good against the Cats last week for two and a half quarters down there. It's a hard place to play. So if they can get these games when they play at home, they play against the Bombers, it's another winnable game to just keep them in touch with the eight. Brownie, are you surprised that Jack Billings hasn't gone further down the track of exploring other options, given the, the opportunities have been few and far between in the last couple of seasons? Well, he's coming back from an injury, Chief, uh, the last few weeks, so he missed a fair bit of football, and I thought he played pretty well the first week. Yeah, he did. wasn't mm. completely across their game last week. But, but he's always the first one out now. This is a player who can have 28 and kick two or yep. three and really... Ch- uh, Probably three years ago, I had him um, up there as one of their probably best midfielders, their premier midfielders. He's dropped off a bit since then, a few injuries. But uh, if I was another club, I'd be going after him pretty hard. He's a talent. Chief, he decided to stay himself um, last year. He signed mm. a contract as recently as that to, to stay. Um, I'm, I was with you, with him, thinking opportunity may be better for him elsewhere. But he stayed. And, yeah, he's obviously uh, having a few issues now foremost. Howie, the North Melbourne issue um, mm. joined clearly and officially what <laughs> – you know, the carnage publicly that had been going on at Essendon prior to them and, and also West Coast throughout the whole season. So um, a, a series of uh, press conferences, a series of media um, representation by the, by the club itself. We'll, we'll start with what Ben Amafio, the chief executive, said had to say about David Noble's position as coach. He's now uh, a season and a half in, five wins from the 32 games. I speak to the players. Um, our our PDM speak to the players, our coaches speak to the players, the head coach speaks to the players. The players are happy. They are happy. The coach has our backing, has my backing, has the board's backing, and as you've heard, he's got the players' back. So they're saying they're happy, they're saying he's, he's created a great, a great environment, a safe environment, and they're enjoying coming to work. He's our man. I think in the end of the week, North got its messaging out okay in the end. It was a convoluted way. They had a members forum, which they had forecast last week to, to release publicly. And I think that arguably got in the way of what they needed to address, that being the exits by choice, effectively, of three recruiters going into the period where there's a, a mid-season draft about to come. But by the end of the week, that, that type of messaging from Ben Amafio and also David Noble himself, and we might just have a quick listen to what he said about the frustrations he's copping, um, just the way he's dealing with this pressure that he's now facing. So our members and our fans understand, I took this job on understanding that there will be difficult times. I'm here for the long haul. I want our club to be successful and strong. And all the things that get misreported outside are just not true. What's been misreported, though? Oh, well, relationships with players, relationships with coaches. I was directed by the club to apologise. They are all untrue. 
I can't speak to the football side of the club, Damo, but from a media perspective, I thought they were fantastic this week. I thought Ben getting up, speaking strongly, defending his coach. I thought the coach spoke fantastically. Well, the coach came in on... They were still heading down when he came in from the way I would say. I'm not sure what North Melbourne supporters expect. Someone has to be uh, on the bottom of the ladder. A bit more than what they're dishing up this year, Howie. You feel? I, I, yeah, I do. I mean, he's, he's now 32 matches in. It's a five win of those 32. Someone ever told you well, they're going to win five of the next 32, though. You, you wouldn't have been shocked. You wouldn't have been a surprise. I mean, yeah, but like they're Howie losing. Said, they were definitely on the downslope for decisions made before David Noble got there. So you've reported many times that there was a mess there for three or four years Absolutely. before David Noble gets there. So he's still cleaning up that mess. He's cleaning up, and the and the footy club's cleaning up mess of poor, not not poor draft picks, but poor trading, bringing yep. players in, a lot of money going out the door to have those players, and then you look at what other players, what other clubs have brought in at the same time. It's a tough one. It's a tough situation for David Able to be in. But I agree with Howie. They got on the front foot and people said they did too much this week. But if they didn't do that, then people would say they don't do enough. So there's no happy medium for anybody. But I, I felt that they got on the front foot and they got their message out well. You got your North Melbourne jumper on. Take your media hat off. What aren't you not happy about? I never put my North Melbourne jumper on. Well, I'm asking reporter. you to. You're a supporter at this stage. Well, they are pre Rombarassi bad, Howie. Um, and I know we need to go to a break, but the decisions made by Ben Buckley and Glenn Archer chairman and board member at the time to, to blow the joint up in 2019. That, that's their right. But they did it 18 months after recontracting Brad Scott for three years. They decided halfway through 2019 to do it. They had a Mickey Mouse of a process to get Reece Shaw as coach who barely lasted one year. And then they've got David Noble in now. And, and right now, Mick Mouldhouse at his best may not be able to get North Melbourne out of what they're, they're going through. But I don't see any improvement at, at all as a, as a media person. Okie dokie. I think you put the North Melbourne jumper right on there for a moment. Captain Negative. But anyway, appreciate your point of view. Calling it as it is, Howie. Take a break.